Hello, this is Minder Chen. This is part of the entrepreneurship video series. And, and this is the third installment of Gross Hacking um, Lectures. And it is about conducting marketing uh, for a startup firms. And last time, we introduced the marketing funnel um, and just review it a little bit. Uh, let's use Steve Blank's um, kind of double-sided marketing funnel um, as example to review what we have discussed. And from the uh, get the customer side of it, uh, we are uh, using different kinds of uh, media. Um, the so-called earned media, uh, such as search engine optimization, the pay media, such as online ads, uh, the traditional ads, uh, etc., we are attracting potential customer to be aware of our product uh, here, and some would uh, show interest in finding out more about our product and service and some may become even more serious uh, in considering buying our product and service. And eventually, um, an even smaller percentage would end up buying our product and service and become our customer. That's the get customer sign. Once we get the customer, we want to use um, various means to keep the customer uh, because the Customer acquisition cost. Customer acquisition cost can be very expensive. So if you can keep your existing customer happy, um, you you end up saving money. So we introduce we may introduce loyalty program uh, to give customer points for their purchase, and and the points can be translated into a free uh, ticket or uh, gifts, and we will. Uh, try to constantly upgrade our product and service uh, to keep our customer happy. We will conduct uh, some customer survey uh, and find out customers' preference and needs. And, and we'll frequently check in on our customer to, to kind of figure out their um, opinions, etc. And and by the way, uh, through the process, we may actually have some kind of feedback loop, um, which um, indicating that our customer help us to uh, spread the words around if they're happy about our customer. The feedback loop may come from the so-called referral. And someone may actually purchase our product for the first time, like it. They may post it on the Facebook page their Facebook page, which will help us to publicize our product and services. So you want to make it easier for them to do so. And on the grow the customer side, uh, we more or less referring to how we can help, I mean, increase the purchase of our existing customer. Uh, one is unbundling or sometimes even bundling our product and services to make it easier for them to purchase uh, our product and service. Upsell means that if they want a black and white printer, we may say, hey, there's a color printer which is really not expense, as expensive as you may think, and do you want to consider it? Uh, the cross-sell, um, for instance, imply that if, if customer is buying a laser printer, you may want to say, do you need uh, some papers to go with that? Or is it time for you to purchase a replacement uh, cartridge toner? Uh, that's actually called cross sale, and eventually uh, the customer may um, refer other friends, family, etc., to buy our product, which will be this part of this viral loop uh, for viral um, marketing. So this is actually the, the so-called customer relationship um, building block in the business model canvas. Um, and we, we want to have enough user coming in, uh, go through this marketing funnel. We want to keep them and engage them. And eventually we want them to um, buying more products and service from us and also help us to promote our product and services. This slide is similar to the previous one. The only thing that 
uh, differed uh, from the previous line is that the acquisitions of a customer usually can quickly, um, with just one click away, the user can quickly activate uh, as a member or buying stuff. So the front um, doesn't have as many layers as the traditional physical um, marketing funnel for physical products or channel. So let's just look at uh, the customer acquisition side um, using a website as example to kind of refine the steps that the customer may go through and, and it will be very useful for us to know those smaller steps because we can track um, how our customer intact with our website and, and whether there's any issue uh, that may stop them uh, from buying product service or signing up uh, as a member of website. So we would have online ads or other means to attract customer to come in and to usually they would visit the so-called landing page. Uh, the landing page um, is the first page people may visit uh, based on the link provided through some online uh, ads. And in the landing page, you need to answer the question like why they need to care about your product and service and, and, um, and inspire them to explore further. So if they go to the next step, they may visit other page, finding, finding out more about the product and services. Uh, that's a good sign. And eventually they may be interested in actually buying. Uh, so you need to, you want to have some pricing information available to them. And, and if, they, if they think they can justify the purchase, they may click on the purchase button. Um, and then you need to help them to go through the payment system. Uh, so the a new user may stop uh, at a different steps, and certainly you want them to go through the whole thing, but you probably would lost some potential customer along the way. And if, if you lose a lot of um, user um, from pricing to, to sign up, that probably indicate uh, that the, you may price your product and service too high, so it's not attractive enough for them to buy. You may want to consider your pricing um, mechanisms uh, in order to uh, ramp up the sign-up rate or the conversion rate okay, from the pricing page to the sign-up page. So this um, refinement of how a user may go through the website from the landing page to sign up page uh, allow you to have a more detailed analysis and, and improve your website design and other related um, business model issue. There are several strategies for customer acquisition. Uh, one is viral marketing. If you can get it, it will be great because that usually means free advertisement. You can design into your product to encourage uh, the user to spread the words around, uh, which would be the so-called um, word out mouse. Um, we even have an acronym for it, uh, WOM. And that's usually what we refer to as viral marketing. Um, and we need to consider the pricing structure. Uh, we can also use ads and use uh, public relationship, uh, PR agency, uh, magazine, news, whatever, to get the words out. Uh, sometimes you do need to pay for it. And that's an active marketing and outreach. Um, going through some intermediacy and distribution channel would be another way. And optimize the design of your website, your apps, etc., uh, will also help um, customer acquisitions. And at the beginning of a startup company, you really try to establish the bitch head market um, of the overall customer segment that you want to target. Uh, this may be a bigger pie, but you want to focus on the smaller. Um, a bitch market. 
So instead of try to reach, um, for instance, 100,000 users um, at the very beginning, uh, it is better that you would identify even fewer um, user, but enthusiastic users uh, who absolutely, hopefully, love your product. Um, let's say 10, 100, or at most 1,000 users to start with, because then you can afford to serve them really well. And if they love your product, and if they are very influential um, in the social network, uh, they can help to get the words out to promote your product and service. That can become very powerful. We mentioned viral marketing, uh, and in, um, in the book called Contagious, um, the subtitle is called Why Things Catch On. Uh, the author is Jonathan Berger. Um, I believe it's from Wharton uh, School um, and the University of uh, Pennsylvania. And, he mentioned a few factors which help uh, the viral um, marketing, um, which means people help you to spread the words around. Uh, just name two cases that um, documented in his book and some of his uh, online um, lectures. Uh, you can find some of the information in the links listed here. Uh, for instance, in, in Philly, um, Philadelphia, um, but Clay Prime Steakhouse. Um, Philip is known for its steak, um, but this particular steakhouse offer a hundred dollars um, steak, which is way too expensive, at least for me. Um, and you may wonder like, how many how many people can afford it. However, uh, everybody would talk about it because it's just it's just extremely expensive. So the word gets out. People would talk about it. They may not go, but um, but at least some people who are curious and have money uh, may give it a try, just because um, the word gets out. And another example um, that he used is this called um, Blend Tech, which is a mixer, um, and they they sell blenders. Um, and, and in this case, um, they will, in their kind of YouTube video, um, I believe it's a CEO of the company, um, 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 which was convinced, who were convinced by its uh, marketing, um, marketing guy and to actually uh, try to blend everything he can find, uh, including a new iPhone. Um, and and that's kind of an interesting video. So people pass that around to their friend to see how iPhone got shredded. And then by the way, uh, the blender is really good, really good. Shredded iPhone to almost uh, small pieces like sand and other than a few other, a few really uh, hard components. So, so, I mean, if you like really strong Blender, um, you got exposed to uh, Blend Text um, Blender, and, and you may end up buying it. So that helped them to uh, promote their products. And John Burgers, uh, in his book, he laid out um, six um, reasons why things um, got spread out. Uh, why things catch on. Um, one is called social currency, which means that um, by telling you something to show that, uh, make the person who tell you looks good, uh, like some uh, very useful health tips um, or very funny, insightful video. Uh, triggers, uh, something that um, kind of remind people about your product and services. And um, if, let's look at an example here. Uh, he actually used like Rebecca Black has a song called Friday, which is basically just Friday, 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 this Friday type of thing. You can find 
her singing. Um, it, it's probably not a very good song, but uh, people tends to remember it on Friday. If you track the popularity of the sound, every Friday there's more viewing of the um, of the YouTube video um, by Rebecca um, on YouTube. So because Friday triggered that sound Friday, okay, and call to the po uh, the passion of the people um, in their emotions um, can be also very helpful to um, to spread the words around. And another thing is public. Uh, try to build, to show, and to grow. Uh, if somehow your product and service can be put out in the public, it will help you to spread. Um, practical value, something that's useful. Uh, let's go without saying. And a good story. People love to tell stories. So if somehow you can embed your product and service in a good story, and and people when they tell the story, they do mention your product and services. So there are uh, a number of online resources here. Uh, you welcome to watch and encourage to watch some of the video by the author uh, about. Um, why things catch on. So here's just kind of brief summary. Um, we mentioned that what it blend, which is kind of social currency, the triggers, okay. Emotion, here um, he mentioned a, a video called United Bricks uh, Guitar. Now you can search YouTube and get it. Uh, the emotion in this case, um, I, I guess it's um, it's someone who was a singer uh, lost his guitar by flying United, and um, United was kind of um, not very responsible in handling it, uh, the lost uh, and broken the guitar. It, um, so so he fed up with United and actually went uh, made a, a really pretty good song about his experience and posted online, and and the video got viral and I think reached like a million uh, um, viewing on, on YouTube. Uh, this is, was many years ago, by the way, so it's very impressive in terms of the, uh, um, the, the, the number of viewing of this video. And, and one reason uh, in, in my own analysis is actually um, not that a lot of people don't like United, uh, which may be true, but uh, it's not that a lot of people lost um, um, luggage or their luggage got broken by United. But um, in, in a broader sense, it touched the emotion of a lot of people who suffer from bad customer services. And, and, and that's the emotion that um, a lot of us have, um, have the feel what this particular guy feel. So um, so that's a good example. Um, and public, once again, um, just something that um, that in your product is um, is out there for people to see. Okay. Uh, if, if you remember U Haul when it first started, they have that very bright, colorful um, kind of um, truck, which is painted in orange and 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 with big U-Haul logo and maybe the phone number and, and maybe even the price about how you can rent the U-Haul. That's an example of uh, public, okay? Visibility, I will probably call this visibility. Um, create some visible behavior residue. Uh, Live Strong um, is a nonprofit kind of um, organizations uh, promoting health, and they uh, they sell the uh, bracelet, uh, which is pretty public. Uh, people who wear it, and you may ask, like, why you're wearing this, and and then then the people who wear it can tell you the story behind it. Okay, and Practical values go without saying, and if we have good story to tell, 
Um, that's also helpful uh, for the subway once you use a guy called Jared uh, to promote its subway. Jared, I guess, was uh, lost a lot of weight by, by just eating subway. Um, so subway uh, end up um, kind of hiring uh, to promote uh, subway sandwich. And however, this guy eventually get into some trouble, so uh, so Subway is no longer use him uh, a few years later. And another example mentioned by Jonathan Berger is um, why certain things go viral. Um, and for instance, if you Tell someone that hey, this is secret. Don't tell anybody because you're you're uh, I'm the only few that know it. And guess what? Uh, you will tell other people pretty much right away. So never tell someone a secret that and 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 believe that it, they're going to keep it as a secret. And and a bar in New York City actually t um, take advantage of this kind of human behavior. Um, it is a secret bar uh, right inside um, a small uh, hot dog uh, restaurant called Crip and Dogs. Um, when you go into the, um, the place, um, you, you couldn't find even the entrance of the bar, but you will see actually a phone booth, a really old phone booth if you go in. If you pick up the phone, um, someone on the other end of the line would actually ask whether you have a reservation. If you say, no, I don't have a reservation. If they do have a seat, they will actually open a secret door for you to get into that secret bar. Okay. So um, similarly, uh, I've been to Las Vegas, one of the hotel, I, I don't recall the hotel name. Um, it's a pretty large hotel. They have a lot of uh, restaurants in the hotel. And one restaurant, uh, maybe just called Secret Pizza. Um, and, and you don't see any sign. It's, it's really hidden somewhere um, that unless you know where you're looking for, you couldn't find the place. And that actually um, attract a lot of people because everybody just kind of curious about What's the secret of this secret pizza? Why um, they don't have to advertise, or why you're not seeing their sign? It must be very good, so so you tend to uh, seek them out. Then the words certainly get out. That's that's kind of why things go viral. Okay, let's get back to the metrics and uh, the gross hacking metrics. And first of all, uh, traditional uh, internet marketing, digital marketer, they focus more on the acquisition and activations. Uh, the gross hackers, their true no, their do or true north is really growth. So they focus on growth. In this case, not only the acquisition or the referral, but but. Um, Whatever is in between, activation, retention, and the revenue, also important. We call this value metrics. We call the acquisition and the referral growth metrics. Uh, they're all important for the growth hacker. And there are tools to help us to kind of create event or tracking event on our website, uh, such as Mix Panel, uh, Kiss Metrics, and HIPS. Um, they all help us to kind of measure um, the visitor's behavior and provide some data analytics uh, to help us to understand this um, marketing funnel to a certain extent. So we need to design uh, metrics to, um, to measure the conversion rate. And the metric should be testable uh, and help us to understand uh, what is working and what is not. And in terms of attention and usage, we may measure it by uh, session time. How, how, how long does user stay with our website? How many click? Uh, are they clicking on certain thing? 
Uh, we may also uh, try to see when the customer are um, interested in giving us their profile, registering with the website, uh, give us the email uh, account, etc. Third, the revenue, uh, whether we can um, convert customer into paying customers uh, directly or indirectly. Uh, indirectly could mean that they're, they're clicking on online to add to help us to um, bring in advertising revenue. Retention, uh, how many times they're coming back to visit us. And we may want to also measuring the retention rate based on cohort uh, behavior. Cohort means that, for instance, if we recruited, if we acquire, let's say, a thousand users, um, in a particular month, and, and how many of those users are still active users over time. That's actually called cohort um, analysis. So here are just some of the uh, conversion metrics um, as suggested uh, by David um, McClure. Um, and in terms of the uh, the metrics, you, you can define your metrics. You don't have to exactly using uh, the one suggested here. For instance, they want to see whether the user are um, visiting more than two pages and staying more than 10 seconds and have more than one click, uh, which means they're not abandoning the landing page. So um, if 100% are the one that, that come to visit your landing page, then 60% um, may actually um, perform some of the activity. If they actually register and whatsoever, that may be even a smaller percentage. And uh, activating as a member doesn't mean they come back. So a lot of them won't come back. If you can have one third of them come back, um, that's from 15% um, against the original number to 5%. That's still not too bad. And out of those who uh, retained customer, if just one fifth of them help you to promote your product and service, and there are the referral, that's pretty good. Uh, if they're the, if those customer are actually buying stuff from you, uh, which may be the two percent of the total, uh, that's still pretty good. And we can estimate the value of those users. Uh, for a lot of startup firms, particularly internet firms, that uh, the, the, the way they estimate the value of the firm is based on the number of users. But, um, but are they very active user, user that help you to refer other people? Are they paying a customer, etc.? You will assign some value to associate with that, which may help you to um, estimate or assess the value of your company um, if you talk to VC. So we can acquire users through various uh, channels. Uh, pay advertisement, uh, such as search engine uh, marketing, uh, buying keywords uh, on Google, etc., and we can also try to um, use the viral marketing, as we mentioned, and through word of mouth and and or other means. Okay, so there are many ways for us to attract user to our website, and social media marketing is is kind of um, very useful one if you know how to take advantage of those social media um, kind of uh, website or apps. Uh, this is by David uh, McClure. Um, he kind of talked about um, how those are, uh, AARR, how, what you can use to acquire users to the funnel of your website, and then how you encourage them to activate uh, through some homepage or landing page, a nice product feature, etc. And then how you can retain the users uh, using email to remind them of some of the uh, services or special events and etc. And also uh, encourage them to to, um, to kind of 
refer your website to others uh, through some kind of competition, context, etc. Um, and eventually uh, try to offer things that uh, they uh, cannot refuse to buy uh, to generate revenue. And McCrew will actually try to uh, identify some metrics which can be very useful. Uh, he called it winning metrics. Uh, it's really based on customer, customer's usage of the sign, uh, our distribution channel, and the revenue generated. Um, so the usage may be related to acti um, activation and retention. Uh, the user may be related to um, the channel we use and the acquisitions. Um, our monetization strategy, pricing strategy is related to the money or revenue. And eventually, we also want to look at the margins, uh, the profit margin as well. Um, and so understand the um, the customer acquisition cost and the revenues uh, will be very useful for us to um, to kind of measure the effectiveness of customer acquisition and retention and growth. So some metrics used by growth hackers uh, is total number of users. We also use DAU, which is daily active users, and also monthly active user as some of the figure to indicating user sign. Um, there's also so-called daily net change. Uh, how many new user we kind of acquire? How many user are reactivated uh, to a user, which they're kind of returning users, and also churned rate or churned user means the user who may not come back as inactive for let's say a month. Uh, you can define uh, how you would def um, define in your own way uh, how many days of inactive. Uh, as a user will become the so-called churned user. So the net change basically is the new user plus reactivated user minus the lost users will be the so-called net change. You certainly want to have a positive number for the net change, which means you're growing. So this is a diagram showing um, just the new users, okay, and reactive users, okay, this is new user, reactive users, and the churned user, and this is the net change. Um, I believe this may be positive and negative on this y-axis. So, for instance, we are growing our users, um, but here we see a drop, and we kind of recover. Okay, so uh, you definitely want to be on the, uh, the positive side for the net change. So if you have a very steep drop in the net change uh, below zero, you do want to study what is going on here. And if you have a very positive um, net change, you, you may also want to know what have you done um, that recently that uh, contribute to this. And so you can take advantage of it. And we mentioned some of the metrics, but here are just a, a few more. Um, some we mentioned earlier, like daily active user, monthly active user. You can actually um, use the ratio uh, DAU divided by MAU. Uh, some people use this as a stickness uh, of your website. If you have one, which means that almost like all your users come to visit your site on a daily basis, that is great. The website is considered very sticky. And so this is a measure of stickness. Uh, stickness is like how, many, how frequent they come back to visit your site. The conversion rate, uh, how um, how can you convert just the first time visitor to a member? How can you convert a member to, to be um, someone who are buying product and services? 
The customer retention, another way to describe this is the churn rate, which means the user who no longer coming back. So um, the churn rate is the number of customer you lost in a period and divided by the number of customer that you uh, that you have at the beginning of that period. That's the churn rate. And the opposite of it is really the growth rate. Uh, so if you have a um, high growth rate, that's really, really good. Uh, and CAC is the customer acquisition cost. Or acquiring customer in a very crowded marketplace can be very expensive. So this is where you want to be creative in terms of creative marketing. Uh, use social media, use those non-paint, um, kind of advertising way we, we call it earned um, marketing earned advertisement uh, such as uh, search engine optimization etc to attract users and and by the way the churn rate we mentioned earlier uh, if you uh, if one divided by the churn rate then some people you uh, consider that as a measurement of customer lifetime so for instance its churn rate is 20 percent um, which is one fifth, uh, one divided by twenty percent, that end up to be five. So, so the customer lifetime is considered five years, which means that a newly acquired customer, on average, would uh, stay with you as an active member for five years. And the next uh, metric is called customer lifetime value. Uh, there are different ways of spelling it out. There's a different acronym um, called CLV or COTV, customer lifetime value or lifetime value or lifetime customer value. But anyway, um, which means like the total, of, um, some people use total purchase and some people use the total profit generated by the customer over its lifetime. Uh, Earlier, for instance, if the churn rate is 20% and the, the customer lifetime is five. So basically, if we use uh, here, we're going to use the profit um, instead of the revenue to measure the customer lifetime value. So if the let's say the annual revenue um, is a thousand dollars, let's say a thousand dollar, let's say the Profit margin is um, the profit margin is 20%, okay, and that means that we are making $200 um, per customer per customer. If the churn rate is um, 20% as well in this case, which means according to the formula here, um, this customer will stay with us for five years then the customer lifetime value will be a thousand dollars okay that's that's the profit okay not the revenue don't confuse this with the original revenue which happened to be a thousand dollars and why this matter uh, because there's a customer acquisition cost so if you think about it um, if you're going to spend like more than a thousand dollars to acquire a customer it probably doesn't make sense you you are going to lose money uh, for sure um, some expert in the field kind of suggest that um, the the ratio the the customer lifetime value divided by customer acquisition costs should be at least three to one. So which means roughly speaking, if you're spending less than $333 to acquire a new customer, it, it, it's acceptable. Uh, anything more than that may not make a lot of sense. So you need to kind of control your customer acquisition cost or estimate uh, the reasonable customer acquisition cost based on this customer lifetime value calculation, which you need to estimate the re annual revenue and also the profit margin and understand the churn rate. OK, so you need several metrics to actually uh, come up with this uh, ratio, COTV divided by CAC. The last is the net promoter score, which is uh, people who are your advocator who will help you to get the words out. They are your uh, referrals, and we'll discuss that a little bit um, later. So we should 
map those metrics to some of the event and we can run those event almost like experiment in order to collect data um, this we covered this previously so for instance from viewing the home page to seeing the pricing page to sign up uh, so we're kind of have a smaller percentage uh, when we go through the steps uh, for activation People sign up, but then they're going through several steps um, and performing maybe some key activity, and that would be a good sign. So um, we can generate a cohort report, in this case, generated on a weekly basis. Uh, for instance, we acquired 90 users. Okay, maybe a lot of people see our ad somewhere, but only 70% come to visit us. And um, and out of those 90, only 87%, uh, which in return, 78 people activated our service. And out of that, only 15 end up buying something, which um, end up to be 19%. Okay, so if you, uh, the percentage here is actually calculated through this formula. So you can kind of, uh, so this 87% is um, percentage over this 90 people over here. And this 19% is actually the revenue generated by the 78 people who activated their service. And this applied to the rest of it. Okay, this calculation applied to the rest of it. So if you do this kind of cohort analysis, uh, it may help you to have a better understanding how the acquired customer are engaging in your product and services and are they buying stuff from you or not. Okay, so this is just another report uh, for activation uh, based on the activation fernald. Um, you certainly want to higher percentage from one step to the other. And somehow um, the percentage is relatively small, then you may want to see how you may want to redesign your web page to entice and to make it more attractive for your users to, um, to go through all the steps uh, to perform some key activity uh, at the end, which is what you really want. And David McClough um, offered a more uh, example of this conversion matrix. Uh, we have seen something similar to this portion, but then he is offering more about retention, referral, and, and revenues. And this is just for your reference. We mentioned net promoters um, scored, um, which means uh, we will ask um, our user in the survey, a simple question, how likely is it that you would recommend uh, the product, service, or brand to a friend or colleague? Okay, and based on their answers, uh, we will, um, uh, from a scale of one, zero to 10, uh, zero means that they're not going to recommend it to anybody, and phi is neutral, which means they're neutrals uh, in terms of whether they're going to recommend it or not. Uh, 9 and 10 are extremely good. Uh, they like it so much, most likely they're going to talk about it among their friends and family. And so the net promoter score is using a formula, which means that the, the percentage of the users um, who has the scale of nine and ten, or ten divided by detractor who score from zero to six. So if you have a positive net promoter score, which means that you you're going to get those viral effects and people help you to promote your site, and that would be good. So you, you want to try everything you can do to to. Uh, to encourage your user to love your product and services and become the advocator of your product and services. To, to, um, last, we're going to talk about just different metrics, the measurement and how they should be used. Uh, some measurement can be qualitative uh, oriented. They are mostly usability testing. Um, 
a monitoring user in a particular uh, section. Um, this is probably used more at the early stage of the product development cycle. Uh, try to figure out problem solution fits uh, through a very small number of users um, using ethnographic kind of research methods. Uh, it tends to be qualitative oriented. And once we're in the more t uh, scale up stage and the growth stage, uh, we tend to collect more quantitative data um, by collecting web traffic or mobile app traffic data and um, keep track of the user, the steps, and the usage pattern. And also, uh, since it's more quantitative data, we can also use A-B testing or multivariant testing to see some uh, different design option and which one is more attractive to our users. Um, so we will not only just use quantitative method to measure it, but also we will conduct experiments so we can um, make comparisons. And we can also compare our data to industry standard to our competitor if that data is available, which allowed us to kind of help us to kind of benchmark our performance with our competitors. And, and it doesn't have to be totally competitor. It can be somebody in a different industry. You can also conduct benchmark if the competitor's data is not available. Uh, so this competitive kind of met, uh, the metrics um, and monitoring and tracking using the metrics um, to do some kind of competitive analysis can be also very useful. Okay, so this is the third and the last uh, installment of Gross Hacking. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.